Hi folks and welcome to Mr. Herbert Science Class. I'm Dave Herbert and today I'm going to try to answer some questions for some people who have asked me a few things about how helicopters work. And I'm going to show you right here, I have my Blade 400 on the training stand and the transmitter over here. And just down here I want to show you, this is a honeybee, this is an ETRM heli. And I'm going to explain this to you, the ETRM helis the tail rotor only goes one way, or it shuts off. Now in order for that to turn to the right, this fan starts spinning and that turns to the nose to the right. But to turn to the left, this motor completely shuts off and uses only torque on the body to turn, which isn't very efficient at all. So let's go to the belt driven tail now and I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, the tail rotor on a belt driven has adjustable pitch both ways, left and right. And remember, turning left on this stick turns the nose to the left, not the tail. Okay, so it basically goes like this, and you always want to use your thumb and forefinger because you'll have the most control because you've got to run the throttle with it too. All right, let's talk about the main head. Okay, you got to think of your rotor head as like a round flying wing. Okay, if you come over here and take a look at this, you've got to pretend that this rotating set of blades is basically a round flying wing. And the way this works is, when you push forward on the right stick, it tilts forward and it flies in that direction. When you pull back, it flies in this direction. When you turn left, it flies in this direction. When you turn right, it flies in this direction. Now the deal is, you have to only pulse this. For example, if you were to hold your steering wheel over in a car, you hold it over until you're done turning and you put it back. You can't do that with a helicopter or airplane because if you hold left stick, it's going to roll upside down immediately and you're going to be in trouble. So when I'm teaching to fly model airplanes or helicopters, I teach everybody to pulse it. You know, you're basically sitting there level. When it's centered, that helicopter's going to hang level. All you need to do is adjust the tail to keep the nose straight. But when you're in the middle, it just takes tiny movements. And I tell everybody to pulse it, like pulse, 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 pulse. If you do that, you'll have very good luck. If you just hold it over, you're going to be in trouble. This is not a video game. This will really get you in serious trouble if you don't just get used to this. Eventually, this will take care of itself and you will be able to do it without the pulsing. But in the beginning, just get used to pulsing small movements. Same thing when you're flying. But basically, it's in a circle in the middle here and you run your throttle and rudder at the same time to keep that nice and smooth. And you push forward on the elevator stick. You can see the blades moving forward and backwards here. And the fly bars do not move. When you turn this, if I just hold it forward and slowly turn this, you'll see the fly bar paddles increase in pitch. And they've grabbed the pitch here for forward also. When the blade comes around here, that blade is mixed forward also, if you can see this going back and forth. And nothing is happening here on the fly bar. But if I go left and right, this mixes. These do not move. So when I am rotating around again, if I was to hold full left, when I get back to straight and level, these level out. And now these are actually turning can't see it because you have to hold something still here. It has to all be spinning for this to work. So that's kind of the way it works. It mixes and as long as it's going around it is mixing constantly. If you watch the fly bar paddle, it gets leveled out there, leveled out there. So it's a constant mix. That's what collective pitch and bell healer heads are all about. And if you look at the swash plate, right here, 
as long as that swash plate is level, you will hover up and down, left, right, forward, backwards. The fly bar paddles are a little bit like power steering. They just are an assist, and this is only on model helicopters. When you go forward, you can see those are like elevators on an airplane. It helps a little extra, like power steering. So I hope this explains to you how this all works. You've got pitch on the tail, you've got throttle, and this is on my training stand. So let's go ahead and fire it up and I'll show you how this works. That thing is spinning, that thing is spinning, spinning, spinning. That's right, and it happens so fast. And it's going like this. You don't even know it, you can't even see it, but this whole thing is mixing like this all the time. It's constantly mixing from the head. So uh, you can't see it, but that's exactly what's happening. And the more you increase pitch or less, then that's the way it uh, controls it. So it was going like 3,000 RPMs, it's doing it 3,000 times a minute. Watch my hands and watch what happens when I run this up. Now again, all helicopters will spin until they get up to speed. So don't try to trim it until you're up to speed. Okay, now you can see I'm using just tiny movements here. I want to go forward, I push forward. Pull back a tiny bit, back. Left, right. It's just tiny little pulses of movement until you get it figured out. You can't not slam the sticks around. And increasing the pitch on the left stick causes it to spin. And we're talking about right nose, left nose. Right nose, left nose. And when you're ready to lift off, when you get it totally level, you just give it more power. And that picks it up. Now we're at flying speed, and you can see I'm just using very tiny movement to make this happen. If you start slamming it around like a video game, you're going to crash. So I hope this helps you understand how this works. This is the very first production ETRM, like a tail rotor motor. My invention right there, there was the first one. And you can see what it looked like compared to what we've come up with. And Alexander van Rostein in Belgium perfected the tail rotor motor mixing circuit. So well, this is way better than, than what you would see on a honeybee or any of the other. See how easy that works? This is an antique, and I think Alexander would be very proud of me to know that I'd still be able to fly this original Piccolo, which he sent to me from Belgium.